Four qualities have been encapsulated in one line. Sidq, Adl, Karam, Himmat. The first one is Sidq. Second, Adl. Third, Karam. And fourth, Himmat. What is being encapsulated in this one line with these four words? Sayyidi Allah Hazrat is referring to, two, to four personalities. And he is using four words and four qualities to describe these four personalities. Sidq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Adl, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Karam, 
سیدنا عثمان غنی رضی اللہ عنہ ہمت سیدنا مولا علی مشکل کشا کرم اللہ تعالی وجہ الکریم اینڈ ہی سیز صدق و عدل و کرم و ہمت میں صدق از دا یونیک کوالٹی ٹروتھ فلنس دا ون ہو افرمز دا ٹروتھ صدق دیٹ از وائی ہی از صدیق عدل ریفرس ٹو جسٹس ایکوالٹی فاروق ون ہو ڈفرینشیٹس بٹوین ٹروتھ اینڈ فالس ہوڈ کرم جنراسٹی بینفلنس کائنڈنس عثمان عثمان غنی رضی اللہ عنہ اینڈ ہمت کرج بریوری مولا کائنات علی مشکل کشا شیر خدا رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ و کرم اللہ تعالیٰ وجہ الکریم سو صدق و عدل و کرم و ہمت میں ان ٹروتفلنس ان جسٹس ان جنراسٹی اینڈ ان کرج اینڈ بریوری ہی سیز صدق و عدل و کرم و ہمت میں 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 چار سو شہرے ہیں ان چاروں کے 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 بہر تسلیم علی میدان میں بہر تسلیم میں علی میدان میں بہر تسلیم میں علی میدان میں بہر تسلیم میں علی میدان بہر تسلیم علی میدان میں I can't help but explain this line see in the first line he says صدق عدل کرم ہمت میں چار سو شہرے ہیں ان چاروں کے in these four qualities these four personalities are known in all four corners of the world چار سو فور ڈائریکشنس شہرے چرچا فیم پاپولیرٹی ان چاروں کے بٹ ان دا نیکسٹ لائن سید اعلیٰ حضرت یونیک یونیکنس اینڈ دا یونیک ڈسکرپشن آف سیدنا مولا علی ہی سیز بہر تسلیم علی میدان میں وین اٹ کمس ٹو دا بریوری اینڈ کریج آف مولا علی ان آرڈر ٹو سبمٹ And the submission, Behre Taslim Ali, when Sayyiduna Ali Haider Karrar Sher Khuda radiallahu an used to enter the battlefield, Allah Hazrat is saying that the swords used to lower themselves in submission to Ali. Ali has entered the battlefield. The swords would drop in submission. The drops, the 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 swords would drop in surrendering. To Mawla Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Listen to how beautifully he says. Behre taslim Ali maidam Behre taslim Ali maidam Behre taslim Ali جھوکے رہتے ہیں تلواروں کے سر جھوکے رہتے ہیں تلواروں کے سر جھوکے رہتے ہیں تلواروں کے سر جھوکے رہتے ہیں تلواروں کے 
in the maqta he says what after praising charyar after praising khulafai rashidin and after uniquely describing the bravery and the courage of maula ali mushkil kusha he spoke about sayyiduna abu bakr as siddiq sayyiduna umar al farooq sayyiduna usman al ghani sayyiduna ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and in the ending line he says subhanallah after describing these masters look at the type of masters that we are the slaves of and he says after mentioning khulafai rashidin maula ali he says kaise aqa ka banda ho raza kaise aqa ka banda ho raza kaise aqa ka banda ho raza कैसे आका बंदा गुरजा बोल बाले मेरी सरकारों के 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 कैसे आकाओं का बंदा गुरसा 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 सरकारों के बोल बाले मेरी सरकारों के जरे झड़ कर तेरी पैसारों के तुझे से बनते Allah 
लीफे में जाकर उनकी नाते उन्हीं को सुना दो नाते नबी सुनाएंगे नाते नबी सुनाएंगे थोड़े दिनों की बात है सल्ले अला रुखसत का फिला कशो रुखसत का फिला कशो हश से हमें उठा क्यों अंडरस्टैंड इट इन दिस वे नाउ डेज वेन पीपल गो फॉर उमरा each individual has his own ticket and has his own flight details he knows what time he needs to be at the airport he knows which airlines he knows which flight he is boarding but back in the day when this nath was being written in that era in that time there were no flight details people traveled in a caravan and large crowds and numbers of people from a certain country used to go together and for that duration they used to be scattered around and when it was time for them to leave madina munawwara uh, the leader of the caravan used to be concerned that nobody that was on our caravan should be left meaning however many of us came that's how many of us should return so there was no mobile communication there were no cell phones you could not phone each other to say we leaving on this day or we leaving at a certain time so when it was time for the caravan to leave madina and go back to whichever country they came from they used to make a they used to make a sound as an announcement either they used to hit a drum or they had a bell or they had a certain instrument that they would use and they would walk through the streets uh, in every gully uh, and hitting this drum or hitting this tin or ringing this bell to say that whoever's on the caravan going back to hindustan or whoever's on the caravan going back to a certain country please gather at a certain place and the caravan is leaving the caravan is leaving so they used to make this we would call it noise they used to make the sound so ala hazrat visualizes now that he is in madina and the announcement is being made that whoever has come from hindustan there is this noise telling them that now you need to leave madina and go back so he calls this shore noise in urdu is shore and what shore is this rukhsat e qafila ka shore the noise that the qafila the noise that the caravan is about to leave this noise that they make either with a bell or a drum this noise informing me that my caravan has to leave madina and go back home this is rukhsat e qafila ka shor now listen to the line again rukhsat e qafila ka shor ghash se hame उठाए क्यों रुखसत का फिला कशो घश से हमें उठाए क्यों सोते हैं के सोते हैं के जगाए क्यों सोते हैं उन के साए में कोई हमें जगाए क्यों अस
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ و علی علیہ و صحبہ اجمعین اے ویری وم اینڈ ہارٹ فیلٹ ویلکم ٹو آل آف یو آور اسٹیمڈ ویلیوڈ اینڈ ڈیئر ویوز اینڈ لسنرز چوننگ ان فرام ناٹ جسٹ اراؤنڈ دا کنٹری بٹ فرام اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ الحمد للہ تعالیٰ وی ویلکم یو ٹو دس ایوننگز ایڈیشن آف دا ایم ایس جے آر بی ویب کاسٹ کمنگ ٹو یو لائیو فرام دا اعظم خان اسٹوڈیو ڈربن ساؤتھ افریقہ فار دوز فرام ادر کنٹریز واچنگ دس اینڈ وانٹنگ ٹو نو وے از دس ٹیکنگ پلیس دس از ڈربن اینڈ پراؤڈلی ساؤتھ افریقن الحمد للہ تعالیٰ اینڈ اٹ از آور گڈ فارچون اینڈ اٹ از آور پرولیج ٹو ویلکم یو ٹو یٹ این ادر ایپیسوڈ اینڈ ایڈیشن آف دا ایم ایس جے آر بی ویب کاسٹ دس ایوننگ ڈیڈیکیٹڈ ٹو اے کنسائس ڈسکشن آن دا انسڈنٹ آف کربلا دا بیٹل آف کربلا دا ٹریجک مارٹڈم آف دا ممبرز آف دا فیملی آف سید نا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم دا پیور ہاؤس ہولڈ آف دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا نوبل اہل البیت آن دا پلینز آف کربلا و مارٹڈ بروٹلی مرسلسلی اینڈ دا موسٹ ون آف دا موسٹ ٹریجک اینڈ ہرفک انسیڈنٹس ٹو ایور ٹیک پلیس ان ٹرمز آف ظلم and oppression and that too against who family members of the most beloved of both worlds sayyidul alamin rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes dearest viewers and listeners this evening's program uh, you have engaged in dhikrullah na'at sharif and now we are discussing the ahlul bayt and the battle of karbala and my technical team for this evening are such wonderful people i make lots of dua for them brother ak azam khan brother abdullah umar sisters tabassum and johara mansoor and i also make special dua for muhammad azam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him may allah bless haji yunus khan and aunty maryam khan and i am making special dua at the onset and i am thankful to the tar muhammad family for sponsoring this evening's webcast and as you've seen on the scroll this evening's webcast has been sponsored generously by the tar muhammad family for the isale sawab of haji ibrahim tar muhammad haji ani zuleikha tar muhammad and all marhumin of the tar muhammad families and all marhumin in the umma of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam haji ibrahim tar muhammad whose isale sawab this evening's edition of the webcast has been sponsored for was a personality that had served the ahlu sunnah wal jamaa and his services rendered to the sunni community of durban and south africa are such that they may never be forsaken, ignored or forgotten. That is why I have included, may Allah accept his religious services because Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him a high abode in Jannah. Uh, he had rendered many, many services to the Sunni community of Durban, South Africa. To name a few, all of in those years i'm talking about in in the in the 60s and the 70s haji ibrahim tar muhammad had made it his mission to travel overseas to india to pakistan to arab countries and identify leading scholars leading orators spiritual guides spiritual figures and he Alhamdulillahi ta'ala was the fortunate person who embarked on the initiative of inviting scholars from abroad to our shores. Many of those invited scholars then uh, took up residence in South Africa. Many of them settled in South Africa. They were invited as guests or they were invited to come for Tarawi or they were invited or they were brought down f- as uh, to occupy the position of an imam at a masjid and up till today mashallah they serve as senior ulama 
of our community. So there are some senior ulama, if you have to interview them and ask them, how did you end up coming to this country? Whichever year they came in, be it the late 60s, the 70s, the 80s, they would tell you that we were invited by a man by the name of Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad. Great scholars have told me this whether they were visiting scholars to our shows or whether they were scholars that then uh, became aimma and then uh, became resident here. So apart from this, uh, they established, uh, Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad had established quite a number of, of uh, religious institutes, masajid. For example, the Raza Masjid in Phoenix Plaza, this was established by Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad. Uh, the Alimiya Masjid, uh, this was established by the same uh, committee. Uh, then they played an active role in the World Islamic Mission as well uh, that was formed by Qaid Ahl Sunnat, Hazrat Maulana Shah Muhammad, uh, Hazrat, uh, uh, Hazrat Shah Ahmad Nurani Siddiqui Rahmatullah Ali. Uh, these were the Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad was the fortunate personality who we owe the credit to for inviting giants of the Ahlu Sunnah to our shows, the likes of Khatib Ahlu Sunnah, Hazrat Maulana uh, Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullah Ali, whose book I'm going to uh, base my discussion on. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullah Ali was brought by Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad. In fact, even Maulana uh, Shah Ahmad Nurani Siddiqui Rahmatullah Ta'ala Ali, Maulana Abdul Alim Siddiqui, in those years, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Alawi Al Maliki, uh, uh, Sheikh Al Islam, Allama Sayyid Muhammad Madani Mia, Ghazi Millat, Maulana Sayyid Hashmi Mia, these giants of the Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jama'a, these Akabirin of the Indo Pak subcontinent of the Arab countries. Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad used to go to these countries searching who is the top ranking alims here. Go look for them, arrange appointments, say, look, I'm Ibrahim Tar Muhammad, I'm inviting you. Here's your ticket, here's your visa, here's everything. You're coming to South Africa and then arrange programs. So Alhamdulillah, his religious services to the community are many, many. Uh, obviously, in a few minutes, we cannot encapsulate. So, Jazakumullahu Khairan to the Tar Muhammad family, Brother Zaid Tar, and the rest of the family for uh, making us part of uh, his Isal is Sawab. Uh, and also, it's, it's, it's a form of us paying a tribute to him as well. May Allah accept his services that were continued by the family, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering. This evening, and speaking on that, when it comes to the Battle of Karbala, and this is how I'm starting my discourse. When it comes to the Battle of Karbala, go and ask any elder, go and ask your father if he's old enough, or go and ask your grandfather. Go and say, go and ask Abba, or whatever you call him, or Dada, or Nana, tell me, which was the best lecture you ever heard on Karbala? This I'm giving you homework and an experiment. Because we spoke about Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad, this program is sponsored for the Isale Sawab of Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad. And we are speaking about Karbala. I'm linking all up and I'm saying, go and ask any senior figure in your community, which was the best lecture that you've ever heard on the topic of Karbala? And they will have one answer for you. And they will say, Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullah Ali. Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullah Ali was brought to the country by Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad and at the Grey Street Juma Masjid. For the entire 10 nights of Muharram, from the first of Muharram to the night of Ashura, Hazrat Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullah Ali had delivered a series of lectures covering the vast detail from the first, covering it in a sequence, meticulously, strategically, starting from the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anh. And alhamdulillah, today, as, as Sunni ulama and as Sunni orators, we hold this as an ideal. We, 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 we use this as a yardstick to measure and to, to have I, an idea of the sequence and the protocol that we need to follow in discussing this matter from the perspective of the Ahlu Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. So he would start with the 
demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then he would come to Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiyallahu an. And each discourse was each night of the series was dedicated to one discourse. Those discourses, I'm talking about the 70s, the early 80s. They were not for half an hour and 45 minutes like how people today. The moment you go over 45 minutes, they send you a note. Molana, the food has arrived. Your time is up. People have mentioned this to me that they used to sit for three hours, three and a half hours, and at times up to four hours. And they used to sit, the masjid used to be full to capacity. Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi used to lecture. Not a single person used to move from his place, not even to wake up and go and drink water and come back. Three and a half hours. People used to, when it used to be 12 o'clock, when it used to be one o'clock in the morning, people used to look at each other and say, is, the, is, is that the right time? How did time go? Because that's how people were engrossed. Maulana Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullahi never used to just discuss it. He used to draw the entire picture and he used to describe that this is how it's happening and that is how it's happening. And one person told me, and even though he mentioned it to me as a latifa and as a joke, but look at the muhabba that the ulama had for each other. They were not at loggerheads with each other. So Maulana Shah Ahmad Nurani, a person one day went to him to verify something. And he said uh, to uh, Maulana Shah Ahmad Nurani Siddiqui, he says, have you come across a certain narration uh, that took place in the battle of Karbala on the, on the 10th of Muharram and this happened and that happened? Are you aware of this narration? Are you familiar with this? So Maulana Shah Ahmad Nurani Siddiqui asks the person, where did you uh, come across this narration? So he says, I heard this narration in the lecture of Maulana Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullahi. So Maulana Shah Ahmad Nurani says, listen, if you heard it in Maulana Okarvi's lecture, then it must be correct. If you heard it in Maulana Okarvi's lecture, then it must be correct. So the person says, how can you say this? What kind of a principle is this? That if you heard it in Maulana Okarvi's lecture, it must be correct. He says, the reason I'm saying if you heard it in Maulana Okarvi's lecture, it must be correct. Because when Karbala was taking place, Maulana Okarvi was present and he was watching it happen. Because if somebody was not there to see how it happened, he cannot possibly explain it the way Maulana Okarvi explains it. Allahu Akbar. So these are uliya. So even though this was mentioned on a light-hearted note, but look at the maqam. It is not impossible that as a, as a wali or as a kamil, pious person, he had glimpses and he saw and he was shown. And that is the reason why he had the spiritual blessing that he could captivate his audience and explain it to them as if it is happening now. And every person sitting in his gathering used to sit and sob. And one person went to the extent of even telling me, and it beats my logic, I couldn't fathom, I can't understand, you also won't understand. But the person described to me, and he said, Maulana, not only were the people in the masjid crying, but even if you took your hands and you rubbed it on the wall, you would find some sort of uh, moist, or you'll get some wet sensation from the wall of the masjid and it used to meaning the point was everything used to be part and parcel of this journey now Hazrat Maulana has encapsulated his lectures in a book form and alhamdulillah this book has been published by us at the Islamic Lifestyle Solutions it's a book written by Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarvi Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali there's a close-up view of this is actually the second edition Okay, and this has been translated and published, not first edition, first edition was published out of stock. This is the second edition. So let me begin by saying and listen to this properly. And if you have a diary next to you. Take a pen and a piece of paper and write this down that Molana Muhammad Saleh Jusab Arbi said. Never ever make the mistake of doubting his loyalty and his love for the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because his love for the Ahlul Bayt and the, his, and the love for the Ahlul Bayt of him and his colleagues are not verbal. But it's published. It's in writing. 
and not published once, publish twice, write it down and convey the message to whoever it needs to be conveyed to. Our love for the Ahlul Bayt is in book form. Our love for the Ahlul Bayt is the translation of Maulana Shafi Okarvi's book over and over published. And now we use excerpts of this book to give an understanding based on authentic narrations. Because we don't need to borrow narrations from anybody. We don't need to take a loan for narrations and content and information. We have our own information. The Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Sunnis have enough information on the Ahlul Bayt. They, they don't need to borrow from their neighbors. They don't need to borrow one narration from there, a fabrication from there, import this from there, import that from there, and, and, and make one big uh, mixed salad. No, no, no. Pure Sunni. Pure Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaat. Maulana Hassan Raza Khan Sahib said what? Be adab gustaq firke ko sunade Hassan. You kaha karte hai Sunni daastan e ahl bayt This is how Sunnis mention the daastan of the Ahlul Bayt. Come and ask us. What took place with the Ahlul Bayt of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And come and ask us who were the ones responsible if you have to trace it back 14 centuries when it took place, the year 60 or 61 AH. Which were these people that put the family of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this? The people of Kufa that betrayed and were disloyal to the Ahlul Bayt. What is the current form today? Of the people of Kufa back then. The people back then who invited Imam al Hussein were also part and parcel, and they were called and they belonged and they were part of the, the, the fraction of people that called themselves Shi'ani Ali, Shi'ani Ahl Bayt, the, 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 the lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, the supporters of the Ahlul Bayt, the loyal supporters of the Ahlul Bayt. These were the same people who invited Imam al Hussein to Kufa. These were the same people who wrote letters upon letters to Imam al Hussein telling him that Yazid has been enforced on us as a ruler. We do not want to accept him as our ruler. Migrate, relocate, come to Kufa. We take an oath. We will. Uh, we will vote for you and we will choose you as, as the ruler of our affairs. And then they went back on their word. Who? Shia'ane Ahl Bayt, supporters of the Ahlul Bayt. So today, what's the use hitting yourself? What's the use hitting yourself? When this origin, Shia'ane Ahl Bayt, the origin is the disloyalty that was done to the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, you want to fool, fool the world with your tears? Whereas back in the day, if you trace your origin, your origin were the people that placed the Ahlul Bayt in this position in the first place. Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, you kaha karte hai Sunni daastan e ahl bayt So how does it all happen? And let's go in the sequence of Maulana wa Karwi. The demise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes place. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an is appointed unanimously as the Khalifa and Amirul Mu'mineen. His demise, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab is appointed. He passes away. And after his visal, Sayyidina Uthman Zunnurain is appointed as Khalifatul Muslimin and Amirul Mu'mineen. And after his demise and after he was martyred due to a conspiracy, then Mawla Ali Mushkil Kusha Haydar Karrar radiallahu ta'ala is the fat Khalif of Islam. Point to be noted, the sequence of Khilafat is the same sequence of excellence. So in this ummah, the greatest, Afzalul Bashar, Sayyidina Siddiq, Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali, according to the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. After the demise of Sayyidina Ali, Mawlai Kainat, Karramallahu Ta'ala, Wajhul Karim, in fact, in his physical lifetime, there was a war that took place and there was a civil war that took place. All of us know and all of us have a historical account of what happened. 
Regarding Sayyidina Imam al-Hassan radiallahu ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam had foretold that this son of mine, Hassan, is going to solve a major dispute between two Muslim armies. So after the demise of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu an is the Khalif and he remains the Khalif for six months. And then he handed over the Khilafat to Sayyiduna Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an. But at this point, from this point onwards, that was no longer khilafat rashida but then that served as the conclusion and the ending point of khilafat rashida and then that became kingdom, mulukiyat. After Sayyiduna Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an, the person to sit on this seat was his son Yazid. What do we say? We say Subbu Yazid. Yazid was a Fasik. Yazid was a Fajir. Yazid Palid. Yazid the wretched. Yazid the unfortunate. Yazid the oppressor. Yazid the, the filthy person. All of this Yazid. What do we say? Subbu Yazid. Wala Tazid. Say whatever you want to say about Yazid. But don't go further than that. Don't cross the line. Stay in your lane. Changing your lanes can cause an accident. Changing your lanes unnecessarily can cause an accident. So what you should do? Stay in your lane. Don't cross the line. Don't speak about things that are beyond your scope. Don't speak about things that you don't have a basic primary understanding of. Subbu Yazid, wala tazid. Yazid in no way would have been accepted as the ruler by Imam al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. When Imam al Hassan handed over the, the, the rulership, we won't call it Khilafat per se, we can call it Khilafat, but we will call it the rulership. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein accepted the rulership of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala. If they didn't accept the rulership of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu an, and they were against his rulership, then they would have went to war against him. And they would have opposed his rulership. And they would have created an uprising because they do not agree with the man that's in the position of rulership. Like how Imam al Hussein didn't agree with the rulership of Yazid, so he opposed it. So likewise, if he disagreed with Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu an, he would have also caused an uprising and the battle of Karbala or a battle similar would have taken place not with the family members of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Yazidi troops, but they would have taken place years earlier and the battle would have been between the troop of Sayyidina Imam al-Hassan and the troop of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh. Why didn't they go to war with Sayyidina Muawiyah? But why was this opposed and the opposition to Yazid? Because they didn't agree with Yazid as the ruler. Why didn't they oppose Hazrat Muawiyah? Because they agreed with Hazrat Muawiyah as the ruler. Simple logic, not rocket science. Even if you passed grade 2, you would understand. Let's move on. They opposed the rulership of Yazid, because they felt that Yazid didn't have leadership qualities. And these are the Ahlul Bayt of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they opposed, and the opposition of Imam Al Hussein was the fact that he refused to take bay'ah at the hands of the governor that was taking bay'ah on behalf of Yazid, and he said, I will not accept this bay'ah. So he opposed it. There was an uprising. He left Medina. He went to Makkah. In this interim, letters started coming from Kufa to say that, O oh, Imam, to Imam al Hussein radiallahu an, like how you are unhappy with Yazid's rulership, we are also unhappy with Yazid's rulership. We invite you and your family. Now, it is correct 
for a person to say that Imam al Hussein did not go to Kufa with the intention of going to fight a battle. He was under the impression that he is relocating and he is going to settle in Kufa and the people that wrote to him letters are going to welcome him. They're going to take bay'ah at his hands and he will then form the Khilafat again. It would return to Khilafat Rashida and he would then, you know, save the Muslim Ummah from a great calamity. But then what happened? Disloyalty, betrayal. Imam al Hussein decides to leave Medina and he, with his family members and extended family, Hazrat Ali's children from his other wives, Imam al Hassan's children, his children, little children. Nobody goes, a person is correct if he says, nobody goes for war with a six month old baby in his arms. Nobody goes for war with a six year old daughter by the name of Sayyida Sakina. Nobody goes to war with their woman folk. Nobody goes to war, lock, stock and barrel, planning to relocate somewhere, to settle somewhere. So Sayyidina Imam al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala sent his, uh, his cousin brother or his half brother, Sayyidina Imam Muslim. And Imam Muslim bin Aqil went to Kufa first to see what the scope is like, what the scene is like. And when he went there, all of them took the bayah at his hands. He reports back to say, it's fine, Imam Hussein, you may proceed. Imam al Hussein now leaves. But in the interim of him leaving Medina and reaching Kufa, these people went against their word. The Yazidi tyranny, the appointed governor, Ibn Ziyad, increased the tyranny, the oppression. So they buckled under the pressure and they couldn't stay loyal to the oath of allegiance that they took at the hands of Imam Muslim. And they deserted Imam Muslim bin Aqil. Imam Muslim ibn Aqil also had two young sons, Muhammad and Ibrahim, six and seven years old. Imam Muslim was martyred. Those two little boys were found as well <clears throat> and also martyred. By this time, Imam al Hussein is already leaving. And he met people on the way that told him that this is now the update. But he, he did tafweed. He left his affairs to Allah. Now, I'm going to share with you a few excerpts. This basically resulted in the Battle of Karbala. On every juncture, it was take the, yaz the bay'ah of Yazid and you will save your family and you will return back home. We will see to your needs. We will give you this facility. We will give you that facility. And each time Imam al Hussein radiallahu an was adamant and he said that I will take a stance and I will stand up for haq. But I will not do something just to please people. Now stop right here. I will not do anything just to please people. Imam Hussein said. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this in capital letters. Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hussein, hello, Imam al Hussein didn't do what people were asking him to do so that they would be pleased with him. And you know, don't upset the apple cart. This is a very interesting phrase. Don't upset the apple cart, meaning what? Don't stand up and speak. On, on a certain uh, matter, if you feel that you are right about it, you took a stance, don't stand up for the stance that you took. Just keep quiet and let everything be calm and cozy and kosher. This is not the Husseini method. The Husseini method is stand up for what you believe in. Whoever is offended, let them be offended. Whoever feels bad about it, let them feel bad about it. 
Whoever doesn't want to be on board and embark with us on this initiative, Imam al Hussein put the torch off, put the lamp off. He said, Look, this is my battle on my own. Those of you that came here with me thought that we're relocating to Kufa. Y'all were not aware that there's going to be this battle and massacre. I'm putting the lamp off in the darkness of the night. Leave quietly and go home. I will not hold you accountable. But I am adamant, I believe in this. Yazid is a Farsiq Fajir and he has to be opposed. Imam Hussein took a stance. He stood by it. He made his voice heard. He was vocal. He wasn't, uh, please everybody. Ye bhi sahi, wo bhi sahi. Don't make anybody cross. Don't pick on controversial issues. This one will get offended. That one will get offended. So where's the Husseiniyat? If he didn't want to offend anybody, then he wouldn't have offended Yazid. Also, he would have said, okay, let me accept. But the Husseini method is to stand up for haq. Whoever gets upset, let them get upset. Haq is more important. Whoever calls you or whoever stops calling you, it's irrelevant. Haq is more important. Haq is more important. This is the lesson of Karbala. This is the lesson of Imam al Hussein. This is the lesson of the Ahlul Bayt. If you believe in Haq, stand up for Haq and stand up against falsehood, whoever that falsehood is found in. Whoever that falsehood is found in. If that falsehood is found in your friend and he wants to break friendship with you, so be it. Haq is more important. There was somebody that used to invite you and now he's going to stop inviting you because you stood up for Haq. Irrelevant. Haq is more important. Invitations mean nothing. Haq is more important. In Allah la yastahi min al haq. Allah doesn't feel shy from telling the truth. Why have we become politicians and apologists and we mustn't offend this one and we mustn't offend that one. I'm going to offend this one, they're not going to call me again. I'm going to offend that one, they're not going to be my friend. Is this a, 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 a primary school that we're going to? Worried about who's going to be my friend and who's not going to be my friend and who's going to sit with me in break time and who's not going to sit on my bench in break time? This is deen. Haq and batil, two separate things. You have to take a stance. Make it known. Which side do you... Which side are you on? Take a stance. Haq is haq. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Wrong and right can't both be right because you don't want to upset anybody. So Imam al Hussein could have agreed, but he said, no, no. That is why the share attributed to uh, Sarkar, Gharib Nawaz radiallahu anh, is what? Sardad, Nadad, Dast, Dar Dast Yazid. He never give his hand in the hand of Yazid uh, and say, uh, let's not upset the apple cart. Huh? He said, no. Sardad, he gave his head, but he refused to give his hand. Standing for haq. Standing for what you believe in. Standing for the truth against falsehood. He gave his head. He didn't give his hand. He didn't compromise. He believed in something. He lived for it. And he gave his life for it. This is Husseiniyat. Where is this found? Today we don't want to upset anybody. We don't want to offend anybody. So this resulted in the massacre and the tragic martyrdom of Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein had already started his journey by that time. And even when he reached, they kept on enticing and encouraging. They sent people with messages. Oh Imam, all you have to do, accept Yazid as the ruler. And all of you leave from here free. All of you leave from here safe. In fact, we will escort you back to Medina. We will give you a position in the rulership. We will send you this facility and we will send you that facility. But what happened? Sardad, Nadad. This resulted in Karbala. There are two or three excerpts that I'm going to share with you and I'm going to end with Salam in the court of Imam Hussein. MSJRB webcast is the program that you are watching and the host of the MSJRB webcast is, inshallah ta'ala, the... Host of the webcast, Maulana Jusab Arbi, is going to recite two kalams of salam in the court of Sayyidina Imam al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. So, the excerpts I'm sharing you, with you is from the book of Maulana Muhammad Shafi Okarbi. Every year when Muharram comes and I deliver discourses on this topic, I find this very apt and I find this amazing.
the way he has encapsulated it and emotional. Please bear with me. Tonight is a Thursday night. Give me a few minutes extra of your time. We will com conclude timelessly. Tomorrow is Juma, And on Monday night is the night of Ashura. As viewers of the webcast, I'm not going to get a chance to discuss this with you. Allow me a few more minutes. Jazakallah. Tag your friends. Let others join as well. So I'm going to share with you, you understood the background. Now, Imam al Hussein had already traveled and he reaches. And it's the same. Accept Yazid or get ready for war. Accept Yazid, get ready for war. And Imam al Hussein keeps on saying, but what war are you talking about? I'm here with my woman folk. I'm here with my children. I'm here with a six-month-old baby in my arms, a breastfed child. What war are you talking about? We are not even equipped for, for, for war. We didn't come with weapons. We didn't come with an army. If you told us this was uh, going to be a war, we would have uh, came with soldiers that would outnumber you. But we seven, there were 72 in total that consisted and comprised of family members, women folk, children. Okay? So I'm sharing with you some excerpts. The first excerpt that I want to highlight, can you imagine Imam al Hussein's departure from Medina? Allah, Allah. Dearest viewers, listen to the story of Karbala and shed tears not from your eye but from your heart. Which Medina is Hussein leaving today? The Medina in the streets of which he sat on his grandfather's shoulders and his grandfather, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to make Imam al Hussein sit on his shoulder and run with him in the streets of Medina. Today, that Hussein is leaving those very streets. As he left, don't you think he got flashbacks that this I, I, I was walking with my finger in the hand of my Nana sallallahu alayhi wa With which heart? So listen to how Maulana Shafiq Qadri, it won't have that effect because it's English. And Maulana used to say it in Urdu. And when he used to say it, it used to pierce you because he used to say it with such sincerity. But just for understanding, listen to this. Can anyone understand the emotion? Can anyone understand the emotion? Imam Hussein radiallahu an must have undergone when he presented himself before the rawda of his beloved grandfather Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Imam al Hussein is now leaving Medina, going to Kufa, going to Iraq. And before leaving, he goes to the rawda and the blessed grave of his nana Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes to the rawda and Subhanallah, which Hussein, the light and coolness of Ali and Fatima's eyes, the brother of Hassan, and whom the beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, used to carry on his blessed shoulders, embrace lovingly, and for whom he would prolong his sajda in the court of Allah. Remember the narration, the Rasul وسلم, was in sajda, Imam al Hussein climbed on his shoulder and he prolonged the sajda so that Imam Hussein shouldn't fall and get hurt. Today, this very Hussein sought his grandfather's permission to leave Medina forever. What a sorrowful sight this must have been. With which heart, with which heart did he say, Al Wida, Ya Rasulallah? Al Wida, Ya Rasulallah. And Imam al Hussein leaves Medina for Makkah in the holy month of Sha'ban. And this takes place in the year 60 AH. So, Sha'ban 60 AH, Ramadan 60 AH, Zul Qa'da 60 AH, Zul Hijjah 60 AH, and then it becomes what? Muharram 61 AH. So, don't be confused whether. It was 60 AH or 61 AH. They left in 60 AH. The actual day of Karbala took place on the day of Ashura in the Muharram of the year 61 AH. This was the first excerpt. Now the battle of Karbala is about to take place. And I want, you, I want to take you, and we are skipping a lot because I, I'll make you sit here till Fajr if you want me to dis discuss it in detail. So let me encapsulate. I'm taking you quickly all this way, and we are going to the night before Kar uh, the battle of Karbala. The night before Ashura. The night before it took place. And 
Malana Okarvi has recorded the khutbah that Imam Al Hussein gave. So he says, on the Thursday, the 9th of Muharram, 61 AH, with his sword next to him, Imam Hussein was sitting by his tent resting when Ibn Saad, the governor of Kufa, suddenly proclaimed his army, Soldiers of Allah, prepare to attack the, attack the enemy and mount your horses. This caused an uproar in the army of Yazid. Hearing the commotion, the sister of Imam Hussein, Sayyida Zainab radiallahu anha, came closer to him and woke him up. The Imam lifted his head. Now picture this. It's the night before Karbala. And all of a sudden there is a scare. There is a commotion. Ibn Saad says, attack, attack the opponents. This commotion caused Hazrat Zainab to be worried. She came and she woke Imam Hussein. When he opens his eyes, Allahu Akbar, when he opens his eyes, Sayyidah Zainab comes and says, Oh Hussein, wake up. Can you hear this commotion? So you know what's his first words? He says, Inni ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fil manam. Faqala li innaka taruh ilayna. I just saw the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream. And in it he said to me, O oh, Hussein, you are coming to meet us. Sayyidah Zainab heard this and cried out, What a calamity! Her brother, however, pacified her and said, No, my beloved sister, there is no calamity for you. May Allah have mercy on you. Have patience and be quiet. Do not cry. Do not wail. And that is why we saying the Ahlul Bayt themselves, Imam al Hussein himself told his family, don't wail. Don't do these funny practices in mourning. Have sabr. So that is why the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaat do not support the crying and the wailing and the pulling of the hair and the beating of the chest. Because Imam al Hussein himself has stopped us from this. And he has said, because this goes contrary to sabr. And Imam al Hussein is telling his family, have sabr. And if you do these actions, it means you are losing your sabr. You are losing not just your sabr, but you are losing your mind. Who behaves in this way? So that people can make a mockery of Islam and laugh at us. That look at how Muslims behave. Imam al Hussein is saying, have sabr. Don't lose the daman of sabr. Then, what takes place? Imam Hussein says, have patience, never lose the daman of sabr. Sayyidina Abbas then said to Imam Hussein, Sayyidina Abbas, the half-brother of Imam al Hussein, he says, Beloved brother, the people of Ibn Sa'ad are approaching you. When he stood up to go to them, Hazrat Abbas insisted, No, you will not go to them, I will. The conversation then takes place. I want to move on and I want to tell you. On the night before the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein, I, I feel so nice, brother AK. Uh, delivering a lecture on the webcast. It's, 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 it's quite a good feeling. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I love this, having an audience and giving a lecture and full-on discourse. So I'm sure that you are also um, learning and, and taking inspiration. Imam al Hussein gives a discourse. He delivers a sermon. The Arabic text is found, and then Imam al Hussein says, and it has been recorded by Ibn Athir and Tabri, this is the words, these are, this is the khutbah of Imam al Hussein the night before Ashura. You know what he says? I praise Allah entirely in happiness and in affliction. Oh Allah, now imagine, by this time he knows full well and knows to the extent of certainty that tomorrow, the day of Ashura, him and his entire family are going to be martyred. The Yazidi troops, the opponents, the oppressors are not going to leave anyone. Small, big. Everybody is going to be killed. And he knows tomorrow is going to perhaps be the last day that we live in this world. But the night before, what is he saying? Is he complaining? He is saying, I praise Allah. Teaching you what, O Muslims? Whatever your situation is, praise Allah. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Oh Allah, I praise you and I give thanks that you honored us with relation to prophethood, bestowed us with ears and eyes that hear and see, granted us a heart, taught us 
the Holy Quran gave us the understanding of the deen. See, these are things that you and I need to be thankful for. Not how much money you have or how many vehicles you own or how well your business is doing or how happy you are in life or what, uh, what, what the things that you understand to be prosperity. Imam al Hussein is teaching you, do you know what you need to thank Allah for? Thank Allah that he taught you the Holy Quran, that he, given, he has given you the Quran, he has given you understanding of the deen. You have made us your grateful servants. He says then, I do not consider any other person's companions more loyal and excellent than mine. I do not regard other family members more honorable and kind to relatives than mine. My dua, then he makes dua for his companions. He says, my dua is Allah grant you all an excellent reward from this. Listen carefully. I have certainty. Listen, Imam Hussein is saying, I have certainty that tomorrow will be the day we face them. I happily permit all of you to leave in the darkness of the night with no grievance on my part. Take a camel each. And whoever leaves, Allahu Akbar. This is the part that I find difficult conveying. He says, each one of you take a camel and leave. And whoever leaves should take with him a family member of mine. It's the darkness of the night. I'm not going to look at who's going and who's not. Take a camel, each go. And whoever is going, take one family of mine and go back with you. Take my Sakina and go back. Take my Ali Asghar and go back. Take the woman folk and go back. Let them reach Medina safely. Let me face this on my own. Take my Zainul Abidin and go back. He's not well. He's severely, severely suffering with, with, with a high fever. He can't even stand. Take my Zainul Abidin back. Take my Ali Asghar. He's only, he's only six months. He cries. There's nothing to feed him. The Yazidi troops have denied us access to the basic fundamental need for life. And that is water. They have surrounded with soldiers the, 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 the river, the Euphrates River. My Ali Asghar doesn't have milk to eat, drink. There's nothing to feed him. There's no food. There's no drink. There's no water. Take the children back and go. May Allah reward you. Go to your respective towns and villages until Allah eases this hardship. Indeed, these people seek to slaughter me. And when they do, they will not want to kill anyone else. It's me that they want to kill. Anyway, we move on. All of them, rep re they replied. And they said, should we go back to remain alive in a life without you? What life is there without you? This was the reply. I want to move on. And then the day of Ashura comes. The 10th of Muharram. The night of Ashura has ended. And it is now the day of Ashura. The, the battlefield is laid out. And the, each and every detail of the incident of Karbala cannot be explained. But I want to just highlight a few and it would serve as a reminder it would serve as a reminder because it's something that all of us may already know but just to give you from the family of Rasul, of, of imam al hussein from the family of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyidina ali's children are martyred sayyidina imam hassan's son is martyred abdullah ibn hassan the direct nephew of Imam al Hussein, which means Imam al Hussein on this day of Ashura, on this battle of Karbala, the incident, the tragedy of Karbala, he watches his brother's sons being martyred in front of his eyes. Abdullah ibn Hassan, his direct nephew, his brother's son. Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Hassan entered the battlefield. And each one goes and he clears a whole section of the Yazidi troops until inevitably and eventually he is martyred. Then Imam Qasim, the son of Imam Al-Hasan, each one is coming to Imam al Hussein and saying, give me permission, it's my time, I, it's my turn, I will go on to the battlefield. And Imam al Hussein is holding on to each one, saying to them, how should I let go of you? 
Like with Imam Qasim, the son of Imam Al Hassan. Imam Al Hussein found it difficult to let go. He says, When I look at you, I think of my brother Hassan. Your facial features reminds me of my brother. How do I let you go? And every single one that Imam Al Hussein is letting go of and allowing them and giving them permission to go onto the battlefield, he knows this person is going onto the battlefield and he's not going to come back alive. I'm going to have to go and fetch his body. Imam Qasim is martyred. And then, Imam Al Hussein is with his sister, Sayyida Zainab. Sayyida Zainab has two young sons. Their names are Muhammad and Aun. Or if you would like to call it the other way around, Aun and Muhammad. So it's easy to remember. These are the sons of Sayyida Zainab. These two youngsters are also martyred. Then the flag bearer of the battle of Karbala, Sayyiduna Abbas. Sayyiduna Abbas is the one holding the flag of Islam on the day of Karbala. He is the half-brother of Imam al Hussein, And he is the one, Allah, Allah, Allah. He is holding the flag in his hand. And he comes and he sees the thirsty little children, Sayyida Sakina, and her throat is dry. She cannot even talk because of how dry her throat is. Nothing has went in. No water, no, no moist, nothing. And Sayyidina Abbas, Imam Hussein is saying, have sabr, have sabr. But he cannot take this. Abbas Alamdar. He says, wait, I will bring water I cannot see. Allah, Allah. Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan used to sing in one kalam. I, this one shair stuck in my head. Mujhe jane do, mujhe jane do, pani bhar ke ye Abbas kehte the. Allah, Allah. Mujhe jane do, bhar ke, mujhe jane do, pani bhar ke ye Abbas kehte the. Kai din ki piyasi hai, sakina ro rahi hogi. Kai din ki piyasi hai, sakina ro rahi hogi. Figuratively, Nusrat sahab share is, I don't know who share, but Nusrat sahab used to say it, that Sayyidina Abbas Alamdar perhaps figuratively said, allow me to take this water back to the camp of Imam al Hussein. My sakina is thirsty for days. She is crying due to thirst. Let me take this little bit of water I won't give it to even males I won't give it to men I'll give it to Sakina the small girl Sakina Imam al Hussein reaches the Euphrates River he fills water in his mash mashkiza his leather bag and as he is making his way back he fights his way he fights his way eventually he's attacked they actually cut off the arm that he is holding that water with. He grabs the water in the other arm. They chop off that other arm. And he then holds the leather bag with the rope with his teeth until he is shot with spears and arrows. And he, 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 he feels that all I needed to do was just reach the camp and get this water to those children. Imam Abbas, Sayyidina Abbas Alamdar is martyred. Then Sayyidina Imam Ali Akbar is martyred. The big son of Imam al Hussein. What does he do to a father? What is Imam al Hussein going through? What is Imam al Hussein going through? <clears throat> Imam after Ali Akbar, radiallahu an, Ali Asghar is a six month old child. And Imam al Hussein's Imam al Hussein's wife comes to him and says, The fight is with us adults. Take this child six months. I haven't breastfed him. Go and see if they would just drop two drops of water down his throat. Imam al Hussein takes the six month old Ali Asghar and goes and he says, Look, it's me that you'll want. It's me that you'll want to kill. It's my blood that you'll are thirsty for. Two drops of water, let it go down this baby's throat. And a tyrant, a heartless, I won't even say stone-hearted, but I will say heartless person 
upon the request of allowing two drops to go down the throat of Ali Asghar, he shoots an arrow that pierces the throat of Ali Asghar. Imam al Hussein now carries the baby back, filled, his arms is filled with blood, the baby, and he brings the baby back and says to the baby's mother, Here is your amanat, here is your gift. Now our child's thirst will only be quenched from the hands of my nana, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the fountain of Kawthar. I'm concluding with this last excerpt. After all the males that could fight, that had the ability to fight, with the exception of Imam Zainul Abidin, that is a different incident where he got up and he couldn't even stand and say that Zainab had to hold him. And he says, let me go, let me have a chance, let me attain martyrdom. And there was this huge conversation that took place. And Imam al Hussein radiallahu anh, says, if I let you go, then who, who will be the successor? Who will be the one to carry my progeny forward? Who will be the, the eyewitness to mention what happened here on this day? Who will see to the girls and the women of, of our camp? Who will be one responsible male figure? You have to stay behind. And this was, there was this huge discussion and he's saying, but let me go. What will I do after you? I am your, and Imam al Hussein. ultimately it was the time of his shahadat. The time for martyrdom had come for he who used to climb the shoulders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of Sayyidah Fatima and Hazrat Ali, the brother of Hassan, the leader of the youth of Jannah, the coolness of the eyes of the Muslims, the solace of hearts that are grief stricken, the personification of patience and contentment with the pleasure of Allah, the martyr of Karbala, Imam Ali Maqam, Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu an is now entering the battlefield. I want to describe, I want to describe one thing to you. Imam al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala he has on his head the amama of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has in his hand the sword called Zulfiqar. La fata illa Ali, la saif illa Zulfiqar. That Zulfiqar is in the hand of Hussein. The Amama, Taj wale dekh kar tera Imama Noor ka, Sar jukate hai ilahi bol bala Noor ka. That Imama of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is now on the blessed head of Imam al Hussein. You know what he says? He says to Imam Zainul Abidin, your time has not come. You still have to take your mothers and sisters to our home. Allah will spread my progeny through you. Be patient, bear every hardship on the path of truth and hold on forever to the law of our grandfather. In every situation, if you ever reach Medina, Allah, Allah, Allah. He says, if you ever reach Medina, present my salam to my grandfather. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are the successor of the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein then removed his turban and wrapped it around the head of Imam Zainul Abidin before laying him down to rest. He then went into his tent and spread out his belongings. Here, he put on an Egyptian jubba. He put on an Egyptian jubba and he wrapped the turban of his grandfather, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On his head, he placed the shield of the leader of martyrs, Sayyidu Shuhada, Sayyiduna Hamza, on his back. He tied the belt of Imam Hassan around his waist and he took in his hand Zulfiqar, the sword of his father. Mawla Ali, Karram Allahu Ta'ala, Wajhahul Kareem. And then he says, After he dressed in this way, he entered, he entered the camp of the woman folk. He entered the camp of the woman folk and it could be seen that they were displaying tremendous grief. Tears formed and fell from the eyes. And now this is the part that I want to share with you. Sayyidah Sakina radiallahu an asks her father, 
Sayyidah Sakina asks her father, where are you going? And in whose control are you leaving us? If these animals showed no compassion to innocent Ali Asghar, what will they do to us? He says, Allah is your protector. I caution you to have patience and be content with his planning. Sayyidah Sakina clutched onto him and cried out, If you leave me, who will I call father? Who will show me a father's compassion? Who will show me a father's compassion? The Imam picked her up and placed her in Sayyidah Zainab's lap and says, Zainab, this is my beloved daughter. Do not let her cry and let her feel that she is an orphan and do not allow her to come to my body. Do, when I martyred, do not let her come close to where I am lying on the ground. Sayyidah Zainab replies, Sakina is not the only one becoming an orphan today. We all are becoming orphans. And she says, I wish for death to come to us rather than witnessing such an incident. My brother, without you, what is life? Take us with you so that we may fight with you and give our lives with you. So Imam al Hussein says, you are the daughter of the one with patience. Do not utter any complaint against the planning of Allah. This world is a temporary place while the hereafter is everlasting. Now here, Hazrat Maulana Shafi Okarbi Rahmatullah Ali, when he used to reach this point, he used to recite some ashar and he used to describe this moment. And I want you to picture this. Say the Sakina is holding on to her father. And Malana used to say it like this. Baba ko kasam de ke bulati thi Sakina. कसम दे के बुलाती थी सकीना बाबा को कसम दे के बुलाती थी सकीना He says, yeah, Baba ko kasam de ke bulati thi sakina. She was giving her father kasam and she was coming back to him crying. And each time he pacifies her, he gives her a talk, he comforts her, and then he goes back. And then when he looks back, she comes again and she's crying and she holds on to him again and she says, why do you have to leave us and go? Is there no other way? He explains to her, sends her back, indicates to Zainab, Zainab, don't let her come again. But when he looks back, imagine father and daughter, he comes back to her, Allah, Allah. Now Maulana used to recite these and I'm reciting. He says, Chilla. Chilla, 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 
قربان ہو بیٹی چلے آؤ امیجن ہی سیز ڈونٹ کم ڈونٹ کم آن ٹو دا بیٹل فیلڈ ڈونٹ کم اگین اسٹے وتھ یور آنٹی زینب اسٹے وتھ زینب بٹ دین وین ہی ٹرنس بیک اینڈ وین ہی لکس ایٹ ہر فیس اٹس اے اسمال گرل اٹس اے اسمال بیوٹیفل گرل دا ایپل آف ہر فادرز آئی وین ہی لکس ایٹ ہر فیس دا کیوٹنس دا انسینس آف ہر فیس ہی سیز اوکے کم ون مور ٹائم come one more time and she runs onto the battlefield and she grabs him and then so he says qurban ho beti oh my daughter may your father can be sacrificed for you chale aao okay come one more time or she says oh my father come to me one more time give me one more hug and listen to what she says then chillati thi qurban ho بیٹی چلے مر جاؤں گی بابا مجھے تم چھوڑ نہ جا مر جاؤں گی بابا مجھے تم چھوڑ نہ جاؤ جاؤں گی بابا مجھے تم چھوڑ نہ جاؤ صدقے گئی ننہا سا میرا دل نہ دکھا صدقے گئی ننہا سا میرا دل نہ دکھا تاب ہوں مڑ کر مجھے سورت تو دکھاؤ بے تاب ہوں مڑ کر مجھے سورت تو دکھاؤ شاہ کہتے تھے ماں پاس رہو نکلو نہ گھر سے اب حشر میں ہوئے گی ملاقات پیدر سے اب حشر میں Stay with your aunt, don't come out. اب حشر میں ہوئے گی ملاقات پیدر سے Now we will hug like this again on the day of قیامہ Now you will run and come to me like this and I will hug you and squeeze you like this again on the day of قیامہ اب حشر میں ہوئے گی ملاقات پیدر سے بابا کو قسم دیکھ کے بلاتی تھی سکینہ امام الحسین is then martyred post events of Karbala is a topic on its own that requires hours That is why it's discussed over so many days. So we will conclude with this, on this emotional note. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our mahfil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our zikr of Ahlul Bayt. May Allah accept the insight that we try to attain from the incident of Karbala. May Allah increase us for, may Allah increase us in our love for the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This brings us to a conclusion of our program for this evening. I am extremely grateful and thankful. Today's webcast was very different. It was full on discourse. I'm glad uh, because they will not be any Ashura program live on the MSJRB webcast. There will be programs at the Masajid. So do attend Ashura pro- programs at the Masajid. Try and keep the Ashura fasts 9th and 10th or 10th and 11th. Ashura is a significant date 
and it's a significant day even prior to the battle of Karbala. So try and observe the fast, read the dua of Ashura, give sadaqah on the day of Ashura, give gifts to one another on the day of Ashura, make Isa al sawab for your marhumin on the day of Ashura. The day of Ashura is also one of the days when the marhumin visit their homes. Do Isa al sawab to the arwah of the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. I'm thankful to my technical team who I'm going to miss for a little while. It's not a very long while, but uh, without them for a little while for me also seems like a long while. So they won't be uh, webcast for uh, a short duration of time. Uh, so do bear with us and we ask Allah and we make dua in the court of Allah that he blesses our AK Azam Khan in his endeavor, in his journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him khair and barakah, take him safely and his traveling companions safely and bring them back to us safely. Allah accepted the duas. We ask them to make dua for us because the dua of a musafir is accepted. Uh, we ask all our viewers to make dua for us on the day of Ashura, even though there won't be anything live. Do remember MSJRB webcast in your duas. Make dua for Taraki, make dua for acceptance. These services rendered via this platform. I mean, the enorm the, it's so satisfying to know that Allah has blessed us. Brother AK and I have been blessed through the sadqa of the awliya kamilin with a platform that I can sit here and I can deliver discourses with audiences at home, in the comforts of their home, listening to dastan e karbala listening to love of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless us. May Allah take the platform from strength to strength. Allah bless our brother A.K. Azam Khan and the entire technical team. Abdullah Umar, Muhammad Azam, Tabassum Mansoor, Johara Mansoor, Uncle uh, Yunus, Auntie Maryam, and um, all the relative and associated members of the technical team. May Allah bless you all, grant you your jaiz maqasid. Um, I'm thankful to Brother Zayed Tar and the Tar Muhammad family once again for sponsoring this program for the Isa Lisaab of Marhum Haji Ibrahim Tar Muhammad and Marhuma Haji Yani Zuleika Tar Muhammad. May Allah bless them. So the next program, inshallah, will be announced via a poster that you will see posted on social media. Uh, there will be a gap of a few weeks, inshallah, but we will keep you informed. I'm ending with two kalams that would serve as Salatu wa Salam, Manqabat, and Salam in the court of Imam al Hussein. Do join me, stay with me a few more minutes, and we will end with this um, Salam in the court of Sayyidina Imam Ali Maqam. Uh, do read up on the incident of Karbala via authentic Sunni sources by Ahlu Sunnah authors, and inshallah ta'ala be inspired and, 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 and be motivated and, and increase your love for the family members of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions and Sahaba of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So until we meet again, stay with me for a few more minutes. Recite with me if you can. And until we meet again, Ma'assalama, shukran jazeelan, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> tujhe salam mere husain tujhe salam mere husain tujhe salam mere husain tujhe salam assalam ya husain Assalam ya Hussain 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 Kar liya nosh jis ne shahadat ka jaan Kar liya nosh jis ne Shahadat ka jaan Kar liya 
نوش جس نے شہادت کا جان اس حسین ابن غید پہ لاکھوں سنا میرے حسین تجھے سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام السلام یا حسین السلام یا حسین السلام یا حسین السلام یا حسین جس نے حق کربلا میں ادا کر دیا اپنے نانا کا وعدہ وفا کر دیا سب کچھ امت کی خاطر فدا کر دیا سب کچھ امت کی خاطر فدا کر دیا گھر 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 ہی سپرد خدا کر دیا اس حسین ابن غید پہ لاکھوں سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام جس کا جنت سے جوڑا منگایا گیا جس کو دوش نبی پر بٹھایا گیا جس کے بھائی کو زہر پلایا گیا جس کے بھائی کو زہر پلایا گیا جس کو تیروں سے چھلنی کرایا گیا اس حسین ابن غید پہ لاکھوں سلام سی وید می السلام یا حسین السلام یا حسین میرے حسین تجھے سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام جس کو دھوکے سے کوفے بلایا گیا جس کو بیٹھے بٹھائے ستایا گیا جس کے بچوں کو پیاسا رولایا گیا جس کے بچوں کو پیاسا رولایا گیا جس کی گردر پہ خرج چلایا گیا اس حسین ابن غید پہ لاکھوں سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام کر چکا وہ بھی اپنی حجت تمام لے کے اللہ غور اپنے نانا کا نام کوفیوں کو سنائے خدا کا کلام کوفیوں کو سنائے خدا کا کلام اور فدا ہو گیا شاہ علی مقام اور فدا ہو گیا شاہ علی مقام اس حسین ابن غید پہ لاکھوں سلام میرے حسین تجھے سلام میرے حسین تجھے
صلي على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد كما تحب وترضى بأن تصلي عليه ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رسول الله انظر حالنا يا حبيب الله اسمع قالنا إنني في بحر هم مغرق خذ يدي سهل لنا إشكالنا فسهل يا إلهي كل صعب بحرمة سيد الأبرار سهل اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم وأدخلهم في الجنة لي خمسة نتفي بها حر الوباء الحاطمة المصطفى والمرتضى وابناهما والفاطمة إلهي بحق بني فاطمة كبر قال إيما كني خاتمة أجر دا وتمرد كني ورقبول منو دست دامان علي رسول صلى الله تعالى وسلم وبارك على نبينا وشفيعنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين 
والحمد لله رب العالمين If you within the range of this sound then it can only be the one and only Azam Khans of Reservoir Hills for professional digital sound system and bridal decor, contact AK Khan 082-786-4322 or catch Yunus Khan 083-786-5322. Big or small, we handle them all. We lead, others follow. The name is Azam Khan, the leaders in sound, 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 sound. sound.